Down, down, down we go, down the witch's road. Down, down, down we go, down the witch's road. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Marvel Plus, the podcast devoted to all things MCU. My name is Brett Scott. I am your host, and this, my friends, is the show. And I promise, no more singing. Uh, it's just me again this week, uh, but we are taking a break from the road, actually. I probably shouldn't have opened with that, uh, that piece, because this week we're taking a complete break from the Witch's Road and delving into the history of... Teen slash William slash Billy slash Wiccan, aka Wanda's son. Yeah, he goes by many names, including. Mm, 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 mm. But um, yeah, we get we take a complete break from uh from trials and and witches road and and really witches for the most part uh this week i figured we were going to get some more context like like some some back and forth between wanda and uh or no, i'm sorry wanda um agatha and billy but but no no we uh we we mostly just get billy's backstory which is pretty out there like i i gotta say i didn't see this coming not in this way at all like at all Anyway, uh, let's get into the episode. Let's break it down, starting from the beginning. All right, so this episode begins. I mean, we jump right in to teen's life. Teen's life before meeting up with Agatha and going on this journey down the witch's road. And um, we quickly realize, like, this is not what we expected. Like, people who were thinking, hey, this has got to be Agatha's son, or this has got to be Wanda's son, or whatever. It's like, you're thrown off immediately when you see a nice little Jewish boy, an outgoing Jewish boy who doesn't seem in into a Wiccan at all, at his bar mitzvah, having a great, grand old time. Um, and so, I mean, it gives us then the, the context clues that he's 13 at this point. Um, in the story, so I'm guessing this is probably a couple years ago, because I, I assume that, uh, that that teen is older than 13, present day. Uh, but yeah, we get we get to peer into his life before before anything happened, and it seemed like almost a completely different person, right? Uh, which we soon find out actually is in the craziest twist I never saw coming. So we get his life here just a normal regular kid like you know going through teenage life and he has great parents supportive parents and like what i'm assuming that's going to happen is like oh man the parents are going to die the parents are going to die he's going to be left all alone something like that right but even that i'm like that seemed like a gimme right that seemed like an obvious shoe in plot point but no we get him and his parents driving home uh, at the exact time that the Westview Hex thing is like all blowing up. Everything's going crazy. Um, the The barrier around Westview is going nuts. By the way, they're in they're in Eastview, so like the next town over. So they can they know all about what's going on at the Westview anomaly. Well, they don't know exactly what's going on, but they know some crazy shits going on, or then the military's all around, and you know what have you. But it's it's wild, man. So we get we get some nice callbacks to WandaVision. Like the radio isn't working. There's like these. Uh, like TV frequencies coming through, uh, you know, old sitcom -y stuff. And then, uh, so they turn the radio off and like, then you see in the background, like you see the shield around uh, the anomaly, like changing in shape and then like spreading out. And you're like, oh shit, what's happening? Um, and then 
like a deer runs out in front of them and oh my god they go into a spin and bam they wreck and i'm like oh here it is here it is this is where the parents die and he has to blaze this trail alone and he ends up getting into wiccan and becoming all emo and 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 yeah but no i was dead wrong again no pun intended the parents survive just fine in fact it's only his part of the car that slams into a tree and uh they look in the back seat to find william which i thought was ironic as well that his name was william and then he ends up being billy but yeah moving on he's fucking dead he's dead man it's like this episode has some of the funniest little like quips and funny things that happen in it and 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 just silliness but it's also dark i mean a teenage a 13 year old boy just died died in a car crash and i love the way they played this because they could have done it so campy but you see this kid die his heartbeat slows to nothing and then all of a sudden he wakes back up and he's fine and it's no longer William but it is now Billy Billy Maximoff has now inhabited this boy's body you know it, it, what a crazy life Billy Maximoff has had what a traumatic, wild-ass ride. For one, he aged up over the course of, like, days, right? From an, an, uh, in utero to infant to toddler to 10-year-old. And now a 10-year-old, I think he was about 10 the last time we saw him, right? Him and his brother. Then he's, like, fighting witches and fighting off the sword agents and this crazy stuff and then something happens with this crazy world around him and he's zapped away from his home away from his mom away from his brother away from his town and into the body of a 13 year old somewhere in the next town over so clearly he's going to be a little unsettled he's gonna be a little off kilter um but man does he handle it well like I, I can't believe they didn't go through like a montage of him denying that he's william and trying to be trying to tell them that he's really billy maximoff and being in like state hospitals and stuff which would only add to his trauma and maybe actually you know create even better uh character development but i, I wouldn't wish that on anybody uh it, this is you know Saying that reminds me of um, The Penguin, which if you're not watching The Penguin, I know this is a Marvel podcast, but DC's killing it right now, at least with The Penguin. <laughs> the Penguin is uh, incredible. Incredible. The Joker did absolutely shit. Um, I haven't seen it. I was really excited to go see Joker 2 and ended up not, not going. Um, first, it was just because I didn't make it opening weekend, and then it was because I heard terrible, terrible reviews. And then, um, you know, and people that I respected and, and, and uh, I respect their opinion were saying it was really bad. And then, then they got an 80% drop in sales the second week, which is crazy. So yeah, all that to say that the Joker might be terrible, but the Penguin is the best thing on TV right now. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Agatha. I'm sorry, Marvel fans. The best thing going right now is the Penguin. It is incredible. Incredible. Anyway, it, it just kind of it, it's kind of wild because the, the parallels here. Um, on the same week, both episodes did like a flashback episode to tell the history of a character we didn't know much about or thought we knew about but didn't really know the background on. So. Kind of, kind of interesting. This one's uh, episode six, and in The Penguin, it's episode four. But uh, still, I just thought it was kind of crazy. Two episodes in one week of, of doing that. But we now have Billy 
in William's body, living out William's life. And then we zap to three years later. Three years now, Billy, uh, well, William is 17. I guess Billy would really technically only be 14 in a 17-year-old's body. Um, but, you know, he has learned to live his life as William, which is crazy. He just integrated right into this life, as I said, not denying who he was, not telling people he's really someone else, nothing. So that's crazy. He, you know, is raised by these new parents for, for the past three years. Uh, I guess he discovers his sexuality, uh, which, which kind of begs the question, like, I wonder if William would have also been gay. Because we didn't really get that necessarily from early William, but early William was only 13, and maybe he just hadn't been interested in dating or anything yet. I don't know. I don't know. Either way, Billy uh, discovers his sexuality, discovers that he is gay, and, and he has a boyfriend, and uh, we, we got uh, some reference to that earlier in the show like first episode or second episode of the show and which kind of brings me back to the whole Blackheart thing. I know we were all saying that Blackheart is Rio, but then Billy got a text or teen in episode two got a text from his boyfriend that was a Blackheart. So I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. I don't know if that means something to do with Rio was actually texting him or or Rio did something to use his boyfriend. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they're all in cahoots somehow. But we get this and he, he he's very close with his boyfriend. He actually tells him that uh, he, he tells him his story that he's actually Wanda Maximoff's son and that he has been living in this body, and it, what's crazy is the kid actually just buys it. He just accepts it for what it is, of course. Of course you are. Yeah, I get it. No, it's cool. Um, yeah, so, yeah, they're just, they're like, yeah, that's, I don't know. If someone told me that, I just don't think I'd be like, yeah, that sounds, sounds, but also, I don't live in the MCU, right? Maybe if I lived in the MCU, things wouldn't seem so crazy. You know, if, if I had known people that got, um, you know, blipped away and then returned five years later, the same age, maybe it would have been a little different. I don't know. I don't know. Hmm, I wonder if William got... I wonder if William got taken away in the blip. That would be interesting, because then he would actually be an older soul. Or would he? He would be a younger... No. He would be in the same... I'm rambling here. It's like I'm almost forgetting that I'm recording, and I'm just trying to piece things together as we're... as we're... as, as, as we... as I'm talking. Maybe I shouldn't do stream of consciousness podcasts. Or maybe I should. Maybe that's... maybe that's fun. Maybe you like that. Anyway, um, so we figure that out. He gets into uh, witchcraft, trying to figure out, you know, stuff about his mom. Um, he meets, oh, God, how did I forget this? So he actually meets, uh, what's her name, Lily, Lillian, I think, the clairvoyant lady, which I'm not even sure if she was really clairvoyant. I thought that she actually admitted that she couldn't read fortunes. That was just a shtick. But clearly she has some sort of uh, views of the future because she keeps blurting out things that we've talked about in past episodes like that that, uh, that are probably going to become relevant in the final episodes of this series. But anyway, um, he actually meets with this psychic, which I thought was kind of strange. I thought it strange that there would be a, a, a psychic medium at a bar mitzvah. Um... Yeah, that just doesn't seem. I, I don't, I don't, I don't see the Jewish faith being uh, kind of like uh, open to, you know, psychic mediums. 
or like tarot or you know what I mean anyway and she said that his lifeline was broken into and um you know obviously we know what that means now it's like he's one person and then his life breaks ends and then he becomes another person and that's what she was reading in his palm so pretty cool pretty interesting that they brought her into the story and we also see uh i can't remember her name what's her name um ally i'm just making up names at this point um the asian witch who whose mother recorded the witch's robe <laughs> anyway uh her she's in it as well it shows her three years ago as a cop she's on the scene of the accident when they get in the car accident so that was pretty cool to see these uh these other characters come into play i like that um where are we at so we do all this he figures out um who agatha is and how she had a part in the westview thing and then he goes to seek her out and try to find something in her house and that is where we met him in episode one right when when agatha still thinks she's agnes the detective and she catches him in her house and then interrogates him and we get a replay of that ridiculous uh interrogation scene where a agatha calls him a loser <laughs> it's so weird the way she delivers that but as much as i kind of hated it in the first episode i kind of loved it this time around it's like Catherine Hans just being weird. And I love that. But uh, anyway, so now we get them there. Um, we, we flash forward to where we're kind of at now. And no other witches are around. Um, only Agatha comes up from the sludge. And talks to Billy. And he's like, how long have you known? And she's like, I kind of knew for a while. Um now she can hear his name because it's obvious to her she's figured it out so he never no longer has the sigil on him so he's no longer blocked from telling people his name which neither name william or billy maximoff uh could be heard before and the person who put that was it is it sigil or vigil no it's not vigil the person who put that block on him was the clairvoyant witch um uh, before he even died and then became Billy Maximoff, uh, that she she did that. She sealed his name from everyone's uh, ears. But I guess that was to protect him, to protect him from you know what what was really going to happen. I, I don't know. I don't know. But was, I guess I'm guessing it was pro to protect him from getting involved with these witches, um, and especially Agatha Harkness. But It's wild. This whole episode's wild. It's wild as hell. Um, oh, yeah. I, how did I leave this out? The return of Ralph Boner. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I'm blind. <laughs> no. The, the return of Ralph Boner? I never thought we'd see this guy again. Unless it was some sort of cameo where they bring him back as Quicksilver in Secret Wars. I didn't think we'd be talking to Ralph Boner again, but here we are. He's wacky as hell. I absolutely love it, and it's kind of weird. He's got a beard and stuff. It's kind of weird. Um, but he, he's zany as hell. I love Evan Peters as this character, and as much as I hated that they, they, they never ended up revealing that he actually was Quicksilver in, in WandaVision, oh, I loved it. I loved his character, and I loved his, his return in this episode. I mean, it's ridiculous that they did it, but I love it. It's, it was, he was hilarious. He was like quirky and weird. It was everything you wanted Ralph Boner to be, right? So, yes, she's the one, he's the one that ends up leading her to Agatha Harkness, like giving her the name and where to find her and all this stuff. So, um, that's how we got there. But now, flashing forward, now they're talking in present day on the witch's road and Agatha is trying to figure out like, oh, so, you know, you're here under false pretenses. Now that we all know we're all after our own shit and we don't, we're not here to help one another in any way. We're just kind of all looking out for number one and, and trying to get what we want at the end of the witch's road. Uh, she's like, well, what is it you want? Because 
she was assuming that, you know, he wanted to figure out something about his mom or get revenge or something, but no, of course not. What he wants is to find his brother. His twin brother, Tommy, who he has now not seen in three years, could very well be in another body or could be somewhere on the witch's road somehow. Like, who knows what happened to that kid when the the hex on Westview was taken away, was broken down. Like, what happened? These souls escaped. One went into this child who had just died one town over, but... What are the chances that there was another child nearby that also died? Like, it, if, if Tommy's in another body, living out another life, like Billy, it could be a grown adult. It could be a female. It, it could be, I don't know. I don't know what happened to Tommy. But Agatha now realizes that's who she's after. Toby, right? He's looking for Toby on the witch's road. Um, now, I don't know if that's like metaphoric, if he's actually gonna find Tommy on the witch's road, or if he's going to find answers to figure out what happened to Tommy on the witch's road. Anyway, but I, I, I apologize for the audio here. I, I had to record this episode while driving at work. I know it's a little, like, noisy background noise, but, um, yeah, sorry about that. But I wanted to get the episode out. Um, But that kind of brings us to the end of the episode. Um, They see up in the distance, there's this, like, castle, and uh, they're off back on the witch's road. And uh, there we go. Like Agatha and him together. Uh, the rest of the witches are, are still nowhere to be found. Uh, what happened to Rio? I don't know. Because Rio, I don't even think Rio was there when they got put into the, the muck. She didn't get put into the muck. She was just not there. Like she still, like she got left in that weird cabin where they were Ouija-ing. I don't know. I don't know. What happened to Rio? So a lot of questions still unanswered, but a lot of stuff unearthed in this episode, which I thought was a fantastic, fantastic episode. I wasn't sure, I wasn't sure I was gonna love it, Um, but I did. Especially when you throw in Ralph Boner for good measure. That's fantastic. All right, my friends, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Got to delve into a little bit of Billy's past, um, or William's past, really, and a, a tiny bit of Billy's past because it was only three years. Anyway, um, man, I don't know where this, is ser- this series is going, uh, but honestly, I love how it's keeping me guessing every week. I never would have guessed the way that this episode played out. Like, you can li- listen back to previous episodes. We put out theories. None of them were a nice little Jewish boy dying, and then Billy... Billy's consciousness then rushing into the little boy's dead body and taking over his life. That I didn't see coming. Pretty damn creative. And you know what? It it could have happened that way in the comics. I have no idea, but I don't think so because I didn't see any theories like that out there. And normally the comic book geeks, the ones who are more geeky than I am, they are usually right there on the theory train telling everybody, you know, what they think is going to happen and trying to look like they they predicted something when it actually they just knew that it happened in the source material. Anyway, because I didn't see that coming, I now have no idea where it's going. Although I think I can safely say they're not going in a direction of resurrecting Wanda in this series. Um, <laughs> I love that they brought back Ralph Boner. Um, kind of redeems him for me, to be honest. Uh, just, just the fact that we got to see Evan Peters again in that role. And what a wacky version. What a what a wild little uh, silly cameo he got this time. Like, I mean, both times were amazing. I was still a little peeved that it wasn't Quicksilver, but like, maybe it still is. Maybe somehow it still is. Um, yeah. Anyway, I, I hope you enjoyed this solo episode. Uh, I promise you we'll get back to having guests here soon. I know it's it's uh, tough to listen to episode after episode of just me rambling by myself in my truck, but um, 
that's what we're working with right now and I appreciate you uh, staying on the, the Marvel Plus train. I really do appreciate it. Um, and let me know. Let me know if you do. Maybe you do enjoy these episodes. Maybe you like the solo episodes, uh, but probably not. Probably not. I would say um, tell me if you like them. Tell me if you don't like them. Um, either way, I mean, that's what you're getting for now. But um, we will be getting back to to uh, guest episodes here soon. Um, hopefully by the end of this series. But if not, then, you know, um, sometime in the near future. We've got other series coming. Uh, but... I I appreciate you sticking around. And, um, hey, if you do like these, if you do like me doing solo episodes every once in a while, maybe you like these little abbreviated, shorter episodes, uh, maybe, maybe that's the, uh, maybe that's the pull for you, is like, oh, I kind of like them when they're shorter like this. Let me know that. Let me know that, too, because if you do happen to like them, then maybe I'll, I'll work them in, um, intentionally every once in a while instead of just doing them as necessity, um. But yeah, that's going to do it for the episode, guys. I can't wait for next week to see what the hell happens with this series. Really have no idea where it's gone. And uh, I kind of like it that way, where I just where I just have no idea and I just got to let them tell me a story. Uh, but yeah, I'll talk to you guys next week. As always, my name is Brett Scott, and this has been Marvel Plus.